Something we haven't talked about yet is animation. We've synchronized the mesh, the skin, but we haven't looked at synchronizing animations. Let's take a look at what happens when we join a network game and the player moves on the other machine. So once again, I've got a game running on another machine and we're just going to join that game. And I'm going to run across the island to that player. And then I'm going to go to the other machine and I'm going to move the player on the other machine. When I move the player on the other machine, it's going to animate just like what we're seeing here. But what are we going to see over on this machine where the ghost is running? All right, we can see the other player now. So now I'm going to go to the other machine and I'm going to move the player. So what you're seeing is the rotation and the position of the player are fine, but the animation is stuck on the default idle animation. That's because we haven't synchronized animations, and that's what we need to do next. So when it comes to dealing with animations, there's a couple of things we have to consider. How do we synchronize the animations? We could synchronize the animations the same way that the position and rotation are being synchronized by constantly transmitting whatever is happening on one machine to the other. That's one way. Another way is whenever the animation changes to send just the change information across. Both of them work. One is slightly more efficient than the other. The other thing we need to consider is our characters are currently being animated using the legacy animation, but there's this new mechanism animation that is available in Unity now. So is there a difference in how we synchronize animations for legacy and mechanism animations? Well, those are the questions that we're going to look at, and those are the questions that we're going to answer. And the way we're going to do it is to use the onSerialize method to constantly transmit the information between the two machines to keep the animations in sync. So if we want to use onSerialize, we have to add a second network view. Our controller currently has one network view, and that network view is being used to observe the controller itself and synchronize the position and the rotation of the controller. If we want to observe a script so that onSerialize information can be transmitted across the network, we need a second network view that observes the script. So let's add our second network view. And now instead of observing the controller, we want to observe the script. So we've got to find our character controller script, just right here. And we want to drag that down and put that in here. So now this network view is going to be observing that component. And so when this script invokes on serialize, this network view is going to transmit the information. Now it doesn't need to be reliable. We can just use an unreliable connection. It's going to be transmitting the information quite frequently. We don't really need a reliable connection. As a matter of fact, we don't need a reliable connection for this one either. Unreliable is actually preferable. Okay, so let's pick this one as well. Let's add a second network view. And once again, this network view is going to need to observe the controller component. And our network views can be unreliable. So previously we've disabled that controller in order to just get our game kind of working and be able to do other network things without the controllers fighting between the main character and the ghost character. In our network player setup script, we disabled the controller. Well, now that we're going to use on serialize, we don't want the controller to be disabled. Instead, we just want to change the behavior of the controller depending on whether it's running on the main character or the ghost character. So let's open that script and change it so that we're not disabling the controller anymore, not destroying the controller component. We need that component to get that information across the network. Okay, so it's our third person controller. Let's get rid of that. And our third person controller. Let's get rid of this. Okay, so now we're no longer destroying that component. And since we don't want them to fight, we need to change how it's going to behave. So let's drill down into the controller script now. This is the script that we're going to need to change. We need to be a little bit surgical. So if we go to the update function. Okay, there's certain things we want to do and there's certain things we don't want to do. Primarily, the thing we want to do is run the animation components. We don't want to run any of the other components. So we're going to conditionally exclude everything right up to the animation sector. So here's the animation sector here. That's where we're going to stop. And here's where we're going to start. And everything in between, we're just going to tab over. So essentially what we're saying is, if the network view is mine, or 
we're not connected, which means we're running a solo game, then we want to run this stuff. But otherwise, we're going to be on the ghost and we don't want to run this stuff. We do want to run the animation section, but after the animation section, there's another section that we also don't want to run. So we're going to end it here. We're going to begin it here. And everything in between, we're going to tab over. So now we've really changed the way this script is going to behave. It's going to do two completely different things depending on which machine it's running on. So the other thing we need to do now is add the code that synchronizes the animation information. And we're going to do that in onSerialize. So we'll just put it here right before update, just so it's conveniently located. So looking at onSerialize, you'll notice that we're serializing this thing called controller velocity. Well, currently, when the script runs, the keyboard input is used to set the velocity or to move the character controller. And the animation script is driven by the velocity of the character controller. We can't do it on other machines that don't get keyboard input. Instead, we need to take that controller velocity and transmit it across the network. So we need to create a variable to put the controller velocity in. And then we're going to extract the controller velocity in the animation code. So first, let's create the variable. Okay, so that's our controller velocity. Now in the animation code, you'll notice right here, it's actually referencing the controller velocity. And that controller velocity is being set up just prior. What we need to do instead is we need to set that controller velocity into our controller velocity variable. So right after we move the controller, we're going to grab the velocity. And then wherever the controller velocity is referenced in the animation, we're going to use this variable. So that's going to be here. That's going to be here. It's going to be here. It's going to be here. And let's see if we find it anywhere else. No. So it's all done. So now when we save this script, that velocity will be properly transmitted across the network. Good. Okay. Now we can run a network game and see if the animation is synchronized.